You guys still hanging with us? You're okay? You're good? You got your leather jacket? What are you, like in the, uh, some kind of greaser club? Yeah, right? Not really. No. It's not for men's only, is it? Okay. There are Harleys outside. There are Harleys outside. You ride horses? Yeah. All right. I like that. I like it. All right. Where are we going down? What's going on? Are you okay over there? You're good? I like you. I like you. You're spunky. Yeah, you're spunky. You got a little spunk to you. A little spunk. Whatever. Spunk. What the hell is that? Okay, come into the stage. Easy, Daddy. Come into the stage. Come into the stage. Let's put our hands together, Miss Mora Hohan. Oh, is it Hohan? Hohan. Hohan. Six people here who I didn't make come. My name is Maura Homan. Homan! <laughs> In case you missed it. Um, so, yeah, you might not be able to tell this, but I'm half Asian. And that's because my mom is Filipino. My dad has blonde hair and blue eyes and is literally pink. So, when you mix them together, you get this. Uh, I didn't think genetics were such a hard concept for people to understand until I was in college and went to a party and this girl came up to me and was like, Oh my god, you have such an interesting face. What are you? <laughs> and I was like, the kind of person who gets offended by questions like, what are you? <laughs> um, oh. <laughs> uh, yeah, so you might, uh, you might be able to tell that I'm Asian, but if you were in my house growing up, you'd be able to tell. Um, I don't want to lean into the tiger mom stereotype too much, but one summer I wasn't allowed to go to the beach with my friends because I had to stay home and fill out practice college applications. I was 12. <laughs> but you know, I think the shittiest thing about having a mom who's from a developing country is that it's impossible to get sympathy for your bullshit American high school problems. <laughs> like once when I was 16, I didn't have a date to the spring dance and I was like, oh my God, mom, like what am I gonna do? I'm such a loser. And she was like, well, when I was your age, I got asked to go to the dance by the nephew of a dictator who'd been responsible for the murders of family members of half my classmates. But you don't say no to the Marcoses, so I had to go. And after that, no one would talk to me until I moved to the U.S. And when I moved to the U.S., no one would talk to me because I had an accent. And I was like, Mom, you just don't get it, because, like, you had a date. <laughs> um, yeah, another thing about immigrant parents is that they're a lot more critical than white parents. Like, once, when I was home from college, I was, like, you know, studying myself in a full-length mirror, as women are wont to do. And after, like, three or four minutes, I started to get to the phase where you kind of look like an amorphous blob because you've been criticizing yourself for so long. It's kind of like when you say a word so many times that it all of a sudden becomes meaningless. Anyway, at that lovely phase, my mother came up to me and was like, Maura, don't worry, sweetie. You have a beautiful figure. Except, you know, like, you have cankles from the side. <laughs> <laughs> True story. <laughs> so for the people who are unfamiliar with the term cankles, it's a portmanteau of calf and ankle. So it's basically when your calf goes straight into your foot. So essentially my mother told me that I have fat ankles, which by the way is the one body part you can't slim down by working out. <laughs> so naturally I was like on the verge of tears. And at that point, like, the inner white parent started to come out of her, and she was like, oh my god, I'm so sorry, I was just joking. No, there's no way you come up with something that specific <laughs> just as a freaking joke. Like, that's not true. But anyway, um, <laughs> anyway, yeah, so I have a boyfriend. We've been together for a year and a half. <laughs> Thank you. Um, he's right over there. We're going to embarrass him. Um, so yeah, we recently had a pretty big milestone, which is that we started talking about marriage. But not marriage in the sense that like, I'm so excited, let's get married. Marriage in the sense of like, we're not doing that shit for at least seven years. Like, are you fucking kidding me? Absolutely not. And I thought we were on the same page about this until I heard a story about a friend of a friend who got engaged to her boyfriend after like three months, and I was like, holy shit, that's fucking nuts, like who does that? 
And he was like, yeah, oh my God, that's so crazy. Like, absolutely not. Hell no, that's insane. Oh my God, absolutely not. Fuck no. And then started laughing for like 45 seconds, presumably at the prospect of marrying me. <laughs> and like, I'm not super gung-ho on marriage. Like I actually plan my funeral more than I plan my wedding. But like, I will say there is a fine line between not being ready for marriage and just being damn insulting to your partner. <laughs> like I get it, babe, calm down. <laughs> um, what next, what do I wanna talk about next? Um, so I've been living in New York for two years, and naturally, I have a drinking problem. <laughs> I told my therapist about it, and he was like, well, how often do you drink? And I was like, I think I have like 30 drinks a week. <laughs> but it's over the course of two to three days. Like, I don't drink every day, I'm not an addict. <laughs> and he was like, oh, you're fine. New York is a drinking city, you know? Like, if you feel like you need a cleanse, Next time you go to the bar, maybe skip the first drink, but only if you feel like it. Public service announcement, don't find your therapist on ZocDoc. <laughs> I mean, like, I really like her because he's the most legit enabler I've been able to find, but like, not for everyone, no, definitely not. Um, so, I'm jealous of men for a lot of reasons. The main one being, two of the main ones being like the whole peeing standing up and the getting praised for being emotionless kind of thing. But another one that I think gets overlooked is that a man can go out into the world on any given day and there's the possibility that someone will refer to him as boss. <laughs> like you would be an unpaid intern wearing sweatpants that have holes in them, buying coffee for your boss, and the bodega guy will be like, here you go boss. That's awesome! <laughs> you know what women get? We get sweetie, honey, and ma'am. And like, I die a little bit inside everyone, every time someone calls me ma'am, which I'm pretty sure is the intended purpose of that word, by the way. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, also men occasionally get man, which is just accurate. <laughs> um, but yeah, you know, as you can probably tell, the patriarchy's been really getting me down recently. We live in Trump's America. But I've come up with a really good coping mechanism. Um, and that is, ladies, listen up. Anytime you get really down thinking about like Planned Parenthood or the Muslim ban or building walls or the EPA getting cut by two thirds, I, I digress. <laughs> Anytime you get really down about any of that shit, I'm going to ask you to picture this very cleansing image. Imagine yourself sitting on Paul Ryan's face with a full bush. <laughs> yeah, right? Like, I can't explain it, but it works so well. All the other self-hating feminists in the room know exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> Uh, I think that's my time. Thanks, guys. <laughs>